<laughs> what? Uh, I keep having to speak after these amazing choir performances. I have goosebumps. Okay. Hi, friends. All right. So today, we are acknowledging Easter. For our Christian neighbors, the Christian members of our community, and for our Unitarian and Universalist faith ancestors, this is one of the most important days of the liturgical calendar. It is the day that we acknowledge that Jesus died and rose again. In our faith community, we believe in taking our minds and our hearts and taking them to sacred stories to make meaning for this moment in time and in history for our community. We don't believe that there's only one right way to understand a sacred story. So today, we're gonna to be looking at the story of Jesus' death and resurrection for our community. I will tell you a little bit of what we know about Jesus and the end of his life. Jesus was someone who lived a transgressive life. This means that he understood the social rules and norms of his day, and he rejected them. He lived differently than many people of his time, and he spent time with people whose society considered to be social outcasts. He loved them, and he paid special attention to make sure that they were not only included, but put at the center of the community. Jesus believed that God was love and loving. He believed that the best way to honor and serve our neighbors was to love them, especially those who were different from us. Jesus traveled around and he shared this message of love and of a world in which everyone lives together where their needs are met and no one gets left behind. He gathered many people who agreed with this vision. However, Jesus' radical vision of a world of love challenged the government of his time. The state believed that if they kept people divided and kept in place a hierarchy that said that some people were more or less worthy than other people, that it would be easier to keep in place structures and systems of injustice. So this message, one of a radical love, a love big enough and wide enough for everyone to belong, was threatening to those powers that be. Jesus was someone who lived with integrity. He was true to himself. He was unapologetically himself. He lived in love and in freedom. Sometimes when we act our most beautiful selves, this poses a threat to those systems of injustice. Because those same systems rely on people accepting the idea that justice and freedom and the liberation to be who we are is not possible. So when we gain access to being ourselves, we claim that power and that creates a little more freedom for everyone. And when we do this, this shakes the system up a little bit. So Jesus in his time represented a threat to power. And one day he traveled to the city of Jerusalem where people welcomed and celebrated him with a big parade. This made the city officials fearful. They decided that he was too dangerous and he needed to be killed. So they bribed a friend of his to turn him in. They arrested him and put him on trial. This trial was not a fair one, as sometimes we know trials to be. The officials presented no evidence. They provided no jury. They controlled the circumstances and the outcome of the trial, and so they determined him guilty, and they put him to death. After he died, he was laid to rest, and his followers, who loved him very much, kept watch outside the tomb as they grieved him. Then three days later, when they went in to look, they found that his body was gone. He had been resurrected. He had risen and lived again. Jesus overcame the thing that most people thought was final and impossible. Now, most you use today, and our Unitarian and Universalist faith ancestors, do not believe in the literal resurrection in this story. They don't believe that his body rose from dead to living. Most you use believe that this story is a metaphor. 
However, this story has incredible staying power and remains very important today. And one of the reasons is because this is a story of triumph. A triumph over that which might be impossible. A story that reminds us that this kind of triumph is possible and happens all the time. Many of us live outside of what society might consider normal in many different ways, even small ways. Here in our community, when we practice our promises to one another, when we live out our covenant, when we treat each other in a way that we know is good with dignity and grace, honoring the inherent worth and dignity that we know each of us to have, we are transgressing the systems that tell us that this kind of love and care in a community like ours is not possible. When we are our fabulous and fantastic and joyful and beautiful selves, when we dress however we want to, when we make noise and holy chaos in our pews, we are pushing against those structures of our society that try to keep us apart from one another. When we honor that worth that we know each of us has, we are remaking our relationships to one another. When each of us is able to be who we are and live with our dignity, this creates more freedom for all of us. Our world is sometimes a hard one. We lift up that it is particularly hard right now for our queer and trans selves and siblings in faith. And maybe Jesus rising again in the middle of a hard world helps to give us hope that sometimes we do win. Sometimes we do triumph over that which seems impossible. Sometimes we do rise over and through systems of violence. And when we are each our beautiful and whole and holy and perfect selves with one another, we help all of us to rise and to rise again. Easter is about triumph and joy and resistance against injustice, against the injustice of the state and the status quo. And in this time in our country where governments and others are targeting and criminalizing people who don't conform to social norms and transgender folks and folks with bodies that can and can't do certain things, it is a powerful statement for this church to loudly proclaim the radical love that we believe in down to our bones. And so it is drag Easter, beloveds. Easter is about resistance. Jesus spent his time with the outcasts of society. He dined with them and invited them to spend time with him. A few weeks ago, in a different sermon, I told you that just because something is legal doesn't make it right. And just because something is illegal doesn't make it wrong. Sometimes laws don't align with justice. And Jesus knew that. Jesus knew that the laws of the land at his time were not in line with what he knew to be just and good and right in the world. He knew that the social norms of the time were not aligned with justice and with love. And so he acted in the ways that were good and right and just. And for that, he was killed, but he triumphed, but he came back. He overcame death, came back to his community and let them know there was still time and space for joy and resistance. Easter is about holy resistance in the face of empire, injustice and death. Some people believe that Jesus was literally resurrected and some people believe it is a metaphor, a story that teaches us something. And the Unitarian Universalist minister, Reverend Eric Walker Wickstrom wrote this line that I really loved. 
The question is not whether we believe in resurrection, but whether we have known it. Known it in our own lived experience, seen it in the lives of others, felt it in the world around us. And I would add, helped bring it into being. In this community, we work hard to triumph over injustice. We work hard to be joyful, to radically love and celebrate everyone exactly who they are. When you show up here, you know, I hope you know, that you are loved and you are welcome and you belong just exactly as you are. After the service in Durgan Hall, I'm gonna put out these gift cards. And these are one of the ways our church is going to love on our trans beloveds. If you are trans or non-binary, gender queer, still figuring it out, take one and get yourself a treat. On us here at First Parish, it will not fix the world. It will not magically make everything better. But I hope it can bring joy to your day to know that this church loves you fiercely. And if you have a trans beloved in your life, you're welcome to take one and give it to them or use it to take them out for a treat. And if they run out, I will buy us more. And if there are some left at the end of today, they will be in the office and you can come get one or they will be back in Durgan Hall again next week. To all our beloveds, all our beloveds who do not fit neatly in the boxes that society wants to pretend are the only ways to be, we love you. We love you deeply and radically, not in spite of who you are, but fully because of it. We love you whatever your pronouns are, no matter how often they change. We love you whatever you wear, however you do your hair, however you show up. We love you deeply. You get to be who you are, and that is holy and sacred. Your body and yourself is holy and sacred. You are all holy and sacred. Easter is the story of triumph, of love and joy. As Ali told us earlier, love grows everywhere. And we know that it grows particularly at the heart of this community. So beloved, let us all continue to live the love and triumph and joy of this day into the world to celebrate each and every blessed beloved who we know and don't know. And may we continue to know always that love triumphs and that you are blessed and holy just as you are. May it be so and may you know it to be so. Amen. Beloveds, this is the time in our service where we celebrate our bounty by sharing some of it with others. Today's offering will be shared between two organizations that are providing direct financial resources to trans community members in crisis. The Trans Emergency Fund of Massachusetts supports low-income and homeless transgender people in Massachusetts, assisting with housing, prescription co-pays, transportation, personal supplies, and more. And Trans Lifeline is a grassroots hotline and micro grants organization offering direct emotional and financial support to trans people in crisis. It is for the trans community and by the trans community. If you are here in the sanctuary, the ushers will come by with baskets. If you are online, there will be a link in the chat. And if this is your first time here in worship with us, we invite you to let the basket pass you by. Your presence here with us today is your gift.
microphone is ready. Now is also the time in our service that is specially created for those of you who came here really wanting to sing an Easter hymn with a bunch of alleluias. If that's you, this is your moment. And I invite you to rise.